Okay, this is the setup on the high definition embedded DVR. This one happens to be the 32 channel. When you fire up your machine for the first time, and these are all going to be pretty much the same, it's going to come up and it's going to ask if you want to do English, and I hit apply to that. Start wizard when device starts, no. I shut that off. The admin password, you're going to find that I will put the admin password on the machine for you or on a piece of paper. Everybody has a different password that they might use. I have something that I use. Pick anything you want. If you want to ask me what I use, I'd be glad to give it to you. <clears throat> I'm just throwing something in here right now. Doesn't like what I gave it. Let's try this. There we go. And in here, we're going to change this to month, date, year. The date and time are currently correct. And it's Eastern Time. I don't do this. I shut off DHCP. This is just me. You feel free to do what makes you happy. Notation. If you're going to use the domain name service, your preferred DNS needs to be an external, which would be 8.8.8.8. .8 this is Google's DNS. You're going to want that in there if you're going to use the domain name or it won't refresh. So we'll move it right along here. Leave these ports alone unless you know that port 80 is blocked and then you can change that. Do not enable UPnP. Do not enable cloud point to point. Shut those off. This is where you would turn on your domain name so you could track this later. You can see simple, all you do is just leave simple DDNS here, leave this alone, and just pick a name. Pick anything. Joe, Bob, Bill, whatever you think you want to use, just go ahead and pick it and plug it in there. If it accepts it when you hit next, you're good to go. If it doesn't accept it, it'll tell you either the name is bad or your internet's up and running yet. And either way, you know what to do to resolve that. Alright, we're going to get out of here because I don't want to reboot the machine, I'm making a video. Once you get into here, you can go to menu. There's two main areas we're going to spend our time. We're going to come in here. And we're going to click motion over here. And we're just going to click and drag that across. We're going to hit apply. Copy. All cameras. Okay. Apply. Now motion detection is turned on on all cameras. Parameters, we're going to come in here real quick. Camera 1 happens to be a high def camera. I think I have it plugged in. Let me check. And I've got a god awful mess of wires here. Here it is. I'll plug this in, we'll see what happens. Okay. <clears throat> your frame rate's got to be lower in order to get your high definition in. If you try to do, you know, a higher frame rate, it won't let you choose this resolution. And this is the one you want to pay attention to. Uh, event because this is going to be what it records at when it sees motion. So this is your motion. Don't even worry about this over here. This is the side that you want. And this is a good combination: 2048, 10 frames, 1920 by 1080. You get really good results there. If you're trying to watch a cash register drawer or something of that nature, you may want to bump this up to the next level, 3072, if you're watching something really important. But don't put all your cameras that high because you'll overload the machine. It won't be able to accept it. And you can do the same thing again. Hit apply. And then you could copy to all if you wanted to, if you had all 32. Okay, we're done in there. Now, camera. A couple of things in here. On screen display, I like to shut off the date and the time in the picture. That's my, that's, you know, that's something I do. You don't have to do that. That's on screen display and shut them off. Apply. Copy. Okay. Apply. Done. Image, I never touch that. PTZ, only if you have one. We don't have one today. And then we come in here, motion. You can't see it in the picture, but the dot's dead center in the middle. It's like a black dot on a black background. I don't know why they do that. It's hard to see. 
but you want to be over here on number six of seven settings. Don't go all the way to the end, just come right here and leave it there. Unless you're in a very small room, which this obviously is, you want to be over six of seven. And that's just a really good generic setting. If you leave it in the middle and it's an outdoor camera, you're going to lose a lot of information. And then the red boxes are where it's going to detect motion. If you want, you can just click on them to get rid of it, or you can click and drag. And now it'll no longer detect motion in that area. I want to detect motion everywhere, so I'm going to put those boxes back. Apply, copy, done. Okay, we're done in here. And now we'll go into the configuration. This is where you'll see your networking pages. Just a couple things to pay attention here. I always shut the cloud off. You, you don't want some of these things. Enable your DNS. Pick your name. Ignore username. Ignore password. General, you got to have the Google here. Your IP up here. Networking is a whole different conversation. Net Translate. You're going to want your UPnP off. Uncheck this. Do not leave UPnP turned on. And this is where you change your port if you need to go to port 85 or 90 because 80 is blocked. If you want to move your cameras around or what shows up on the main screen, this is where we do it. Live view. If you want to see a 1x5 grid. Enable audio output. If you buy the package from me, you're going to find that the monitor will support audio. The machine supports audio. Everything I send you supports everything that it will all do. So it kind of comes as a kit to you. Enable audio output. VGA or HDMI. That's good. If you want to move cameras around, you can come in here and say, okay, camera 3, I want to see channel 9. And channel 9 will now show on channel 3 on your live mode. So you don't have to unplug and plug in BNCs. You can just come in here and mess it around. Channel 0 is a full view screen of all cameras at low bandwidth over the Internet. So if you have a very low Internet speed and people need to get into these, this video remotely, you can come in here and you can adjust the bit rate on a full screen one picture of all the video cameras that ships out over the internet that's what channel zero is if your machine is buzzing non-stop this is where you want to come and you want to change your exceptions to all and this is where we add a user we add a user we click add U F E R enter password like I said anybody can use whatever they want for passwords but it needs to be a little complex a simple password will not do on these units and you're going to need to be an operator if you leave it as a guest you're not going to be able to do playback we click on OK and now we've just added a user. It was that simple. Um, you can log in more than one time as user, so there's no reason to add 20 users. Bob, Bill, Joe, don't, don't waste your time. All you're doing is just confusing yourself and the machine. Just set up a user and let everybody log in as that user. Okay, that's done. Done. And that gets you pretty good. That'll get you set up. Alright, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. Thank you very much.